Jesus criticized religious leaders for teaching commandments from men that weren't from God. But how do we know it's from God when men say God said? We'll talk about that next on Polygamy. What love is this? As we've discussed in the past, there have been hundreds of breakoffs from the original Mormon church, and every one of them make claim that their leadership, usually called a prophet, has heard from God, and they will say God said, and then they make for doctrine what they say God said. Most who were born in and raised in any sect of Mormonism really never check it out to affirm what God really did say. This time we welcome Karen Bradshaw as our co-host, and thank you, Karen, for coming. Thank you for having me. As we discuss this important information. And we were both raised in a polygamy group, different groups, but we were both raised in a polygamy group that teaches the leaders here from God on our behalf, right? Isn't yeah. that what your and, leader taught you? And, and, and that's what we believed. Very similar lies. Mm -hmm. And to disobey him was like disobeying God himself. Yes. That's what we learned. Now, the LDS Church presents its current president leader precisely the same way. They're lifted high up above all other people. They're reverenced and respected as one who is highly and privileged enough to hear from God. We want you to know what Jesus said about this, quoting from Mark. Mark 7, 7 through 9. How be it in, in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrine the commandments of men? For laying aside the commandments of God, you hold the traditions of men, as the washing of pots and cups, and many other such like things you do. And he said unto them, Full well you reject the commandments of God, that ye may keep your own traditions. And this is a staggering fulfillment in the Mormon religion. Both LDS and the polygamy groups, all of them have put aside biblical teachings, things that Jesus himself taught, and then replace them with their own commandments. And to justify doing this, they claim you can't trust the Bible. <clears throat> Even though the Bible has passed every single test of authenticity and correct transmission through the ages, they continue to claim that many plain and precious things have been removed, and it's their calling to come forward and provide for the people that which God was lost, what God lost from the Bible. But God doesn't lose things. No. And he, he never changes. And he doesn't change. And they all th seem to think that he just loses stuff and people and religions and gospel all over the place. Mm -hmm. Actually, evidence supports the biblical accuracy, not its corruption. And so we want to ask the question again that we asked at the beginning, how can we know it's true when men say God said? Well, it's really very simple. Just follow Jesus. And, and leave men out of it. And this launches an ongoing series in which we will discuss many of the sermons given by the deceased founder of the All Red Polygamy Group, Rulin Allred, who taught things God did not say. And we're scouring through some of his early sermons and locating the doctrines of men that they claim are from God, and we're going to talk about them on this program. Their teachings, uh, these are teachings that hold their members captive, and they make polygamy, of course, a requirement of God. And as always, we will apply biblical authority to his claims. Now, uh, we're going to put a picture of his book that we're taking these sermons from on the screen, both the front of the book and the inside front. It's entitled Treasures of Knowledge, Compilation of His sermons, talks, and teachings. And these are Rulin Allreds. He was the founder and the leader and the prophet of the Allred Polygamy Group. It's also known as the Apostolic United Brethren or the AUB, and its headquarters are in Bluffdale, Utah. He was a naturopathic physician. 
he was excommunicated from the LDS church in June of 1926 because he believed in practicing polygamy that their revered leader, Joseph Smith, uh, taught and practiced. Allred was born in March of 1906 in Chihuahua, Mexico, and died May 1977 at age 71 from gunshot wounds ordered by polygamist Erval LeBaron. Yes, and he was born from the second wife. And he was born from the second wife. Okay. And Chihuahua, Mexico tells us that that's where, you know, the Mormons fled there when they were being persecuted here for living polygamy. So... We have a picture that we're going to put on the screen of Rulon Allred surrounded by many of the 19 of his wives. Um, now, the male leaders in polygamy groups, of course, always get the most wives. That's not unusual. However, his first and legal wife and their children were abandoned by him when she refused to live polygamy, when he decided he wanted to, to live polygamy. Yes, and she threatened him with castration. Oh, she did. Yes. <laughs> oh boy, no wonder she aban he abandoned her. <laughs> he was afraid of her. Huh? Anyway, that that according to First Timothy chapter five verse eight, the fact that he abandoned his legal wife and family alone completely eliminates him from being God's truth teller. Ruland's second wife was only fifteen, right? Only fifteen years mm -hmm. old when he married her, and he was thirty-eight years old. That's following in Joseph Smith's footsteps. He was also known as Dr. Allred because of his naturopathic treatments, and he also performed unqualified obstetrics for polygamists. Now, since his death, of course, others have stepped in to take his place of leadership, but Rulon Allred remains a beloved memory to polygamists in the AUB polygamy group. And he's often referred to as having been a kind, gentle, soft-spoken man. But the story behind the scenes reveals his polygamy was just like all other plural marriages. There were favorites, loneliness, poverty, lies, and deceit about God's requirement for marriage and for eternal life. Obviously, he also had a tendency for adolescent girls. He was considered by the group of his God's mouthpiece until he was killed. And during his years of leadership, he gave hundreds of sermons, talks and discourses and doctrinal messages, most of them undergirding the practice of polygamy. Karen uh, and I are going to discuss some of these sermons from that book that we showed on the screen. Now, admittedly, most of these sermons were difficult to get through, <laughs> but you grew up under their authority, so you're very familiar with his teachings. And we're going to pick through some of his messages and point out blatant biblical contradictions, which will show our viewers exactly what Jesus meant when he said they worship God in vain, teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. So first, we're going to quote from the introduction of the book. So, um, the introduction in this dispensation, few men have better understood the necessity of living every commandment of God than did Ruland Al Clark Allred. He also keenly understood that a man must be called of God by proper authority to preach the gospel and to receive or administer in ordinances. These discourses reveal those important insights. Okay. Treasures of knowledge. <laughs> That's from, his, from the introduction of his book. Yes, it's... <laughs> and it sounds so right. It's so beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it sounds good for people mm -hmm. to hear that they must keep every commandment of God to establish your own righteousness mm -hmm. and your own worthiness. But is that what God said that we must do to please Him or go into His heaven? Isaiah 57, 12 says, I will declare your righteousness and your deeds, but they will not profit you. And Isaiah 64, 6 says, all of us have become like one who is unclean and all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. Obviously, our righteous deeds do not, will not, and cannot help us on Judgment Day. I actually use that scripture with my husband yeah. when I was questioning things. Uh -huh. Just like, how come we have to do all this stuff? You yeah. know? How, do, how come? <laughs> a good question, and they can't really answer it, um, not not to to um, unless they contradict scripture, which of course is what they do. But even polygamy, which they think makes you righteous in God's sight, can cannot help us. 
and he would he would say things like, "Well, we'll, we'll figure it out in heaven. God's going to set everything right." You know, yeah. that's how they answered it. They answer a lot of things that way when they can't answer it otherwise. Mm -hmm. A lot of them. The LDS Church does the same thing. Now, Allred claimed that a man must be called, in the introduction, he said a man must be called by proper authority to preach the gospel. But that isn't correct either. The Bible tells us, and Jesus commanded each one of his genuine followers to proclaim his gospel message to others. That his gospel, but uh, of course, is not the same as the gospel that Allred preached anyway. You know, it, yeah. he preached a false gospel. But note that he also said that the person that is called by God to administer ordinances. Yet, there are no ordinances to administer, according to the Bible, because all of the ordinances have been removed and nailed to the cross of Jesus Christ. And we'll quote from Colossians that says so. Yeah, well, this scripture really hit me hard when I started studying the Word. Mm -hmm. And I shared this with my leaders, and they said, what Bible are you reading out of? <laughs> like, that's not in the Bible, is it? Uh, Anyway, it's it's so profound, and especially to someone who thinks they have to keep all the ordinances. Right. So Colossians two thirteen seventeen, and you being dead in your sins, hath been quickened together, or hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all your trespasses, blotting out the handwritings of ordinances that were against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. Or, sorry, nailing it to his cross, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Let no man therefore judge you in meat, or in drink, or in respect of a holy day, or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. So they were all just a shadow pointing to Jesus. Jesus fulfilled it all. We don't have to do all those. They were all nailed to the cross. Jesus did it all and he Praise did it God. perfectly. I know. Praise That's God. what makes it good news, the, the gospel. Yes. So there were and are no ordinances or religious laws for us to be shackled with. Then Jesus took care of our sins by dying on the cross to pay for them in full. But his sacrifice is effective only for those who are in Christ. It's Jesus' sacrifice, not polygamy, not laws and ordinances that save those who believe. We have another passage from Hebrews. Hebrews 9, 9 and 11. It was symbolic for the present time in which both gifts and sacrifices are offered, which cannot make him who performs the service perfect in regards to conscience. Concerned with only with food and drinks, various washings and fresh and fleshly ordinances imposed until the time of reformation. But Christ came as a high priest of the good things to come with the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands that is not of his creation. So uh, I, I, I hope you can see that. The Hebrews is telling us Jesus came as the high priest, the perfect high priest. If your high priest isn't perfect, he's a false high priest. And there's only one high priest. Right. That's so important. It, it is very important. And he's the only one. We don't need a prophet in the way. Right. Exactly. And he came to administer the gospel of grace. And all these ordinances and rituals could not and did not make anyone perfect. They were works, not grace. So stop trying to live a life of worthiness that no one can do. And just turn to Jesus and he'll take you. But only if your trust is in him alone. And then he'll give you his perfect righteousness as a gift. So already in the first paragraph of the introduction, their man-made doctrines are annihilated by biblical teachings. So next we need to go to the first sermon in the book. And it was a sermon that he gave in October of 1961 explaining the position that the LDS is the only true church and the AUB is part of it. But they believe the AUB alone has priesthood authority, not right. the LDS. We quote from selected portion. We are meeting now in his, the Lord's name, and we acknowledge his goodness to us. We uphold his servant, Joseph Smith, as our prophet, and we accept all that we reveal through him. And we try to exemplify in our lives every principle he advocated. 
We declare ourselves members of the church he organized, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I can hear him now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, Joseph Smith is elevated as a prophet in all of the Mormon breakoffs, all the religions. There's no surprise there. And he tells his listeners that Joseph Smith is his example for them to follow and that they belong to the LDS Church itself. But that's not true. The LDS Church would deny that immediately. Um, they belong to Mormonism, but they don't belong to the LDS Church. The the LDS Church excommunicates polygamists, yeah. so how could they be part of it? Yeah, well, um, I think we were taught that from the time we were little. I remember the baptisms that we did, even with our own children, that they, they just emphasize that. You are part of the LDS Church. You are not being baptized into any other church. This mm. is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. You're a Mormon, mm -hmm. you, you know, and, and how they taught us that our, pre, that, but we were the ones that only had the true authority. Right, to the priesthood authority. The priesthood authority, right, the, the keys of the priesthood. And the church had lost that, and none of them held the power of the priesthood. Yeah. Now, it's interesting the AUB would do that. As far as I know, all the other polygamy groups deny their part of the LDS Church, that the LDS Church has become apostate, and they have become the only true church. But mm -hmm. So it's interesting the AUB hangs on to the fact. But then, of course, they have to be the ones that only have the priesthood. And they all uh, exalt themselves in that way. Um, and the authority to, uh, and to the, act in his name. And his, that's what the priesthood is, is the mm -hmm. authority on earth to act in his names. Uh, now, all read <laughs> quote is by the past presidents and prophets of the church. Um, and he said that God's true church would never be totally withdrawn but that, that there would always be enough priesthood left for them to be triumphant. He, then he said, quote, for there is not enough time for God to set up another church and prepare another people. You know what? God doesn't lose things. He, he, <laughs> does, he doesn't lose his gospel. He doesn't lose people. He doesn't lose or misplace his kingdom or his word. Everything, every person is safe in the hands of God. He's not going to lose genuine believers or allow wicked men to remove, corrupt, or obliterate his message. And God has the time to do whatever he wants to do by the way. Mm -hmm. And this, in fact, is what Jesus said about that yeah. in John 17. Yeah, that this scripture also <laughs> really just was comforting to me um, because I felt like I was like a son of perdition, you know, because mm -hmm. I was not a part of them. So John 17, 12, while I was with them, I kept, I kept them in your name, which you have given me. I have guarded them, and not one of them has been lost except the sons of destruction, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. John eighteen nine. This was the fulfilled. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. Of those who you gave me, I have lost none, not one. So God doesn't need the weakness of humans to protect his promises of security in his salvation. And since the Bible says that it's impossible for God to lie and possible that every man does lie, our trust should be in God alone, not in any man or his claims of what he said God said. Rulin Allred taught that the LDS Church was God's only true church, but previous Mormon prophets and leaders warned that when the LDS Church gave up polygamy, they would lose their only church status. So which is it? Which prophet told the truth? Which one got it wrong? In typical mm -hmm. polygamous arrogance, Allred said that LDS members don't dare or are not strong enough to live polygamy. I think that's interesting. We do know that there are many LDS who would sure like to live polygamy. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> now, later in his sermon, Allred preached this. The only reason we are meeting outside of the church is because a special revelation given to President John Taylor. The Lord Jesus Christ and the Prophet Joseph spent one full night with John Taylor, outlining and laying the steps to keep alive the higher principles of the gospel. President Taylor was commanded to set apart men and confer upon them the power of the priesthood required to officiate in these principles. He gave them the authority and the responsibility to keep these principles alive. Now, notice he said something that all Mormon polygamists believe the supernatural meeting of John Taylor had with Joseph Smith and Jesus Christ himself one night. And the purpose was to establish the higher principles of the gospel, which is polygamy. 
Yes, okay. September 26th. But, but, <laughs> but if polygamy is a higher principle of the gospel, why didn't Jesus say so? He's the Savior. And he taught nothing in secret. He was asked the question, in fact, what is the most important commandment? Now, they're saying polygamy is the highest principle. Okay? But somebody came to Jesus and said, what's the most important commandment? Jesus didn't say it was polygamy. This is what he did say. Mark 12, 28 and 31. And one of the scribes came up and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that he answered them well, asked him, which commandment is the most important, important of all? Jesus answered, the most important is, hear, O Israel, the Lord, is our, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. And the second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Yet every polygamy group teaches that polygamy is such a high and righteous commandment, they call it the principle, that God had to remove it from the ancient Israelites because they weren't worthy enough to live it, such a high command. And he didn't restore it until Jesus, Joseph Smith came. That's what we were taught. But if God removed polygamy from the ancient Israelites, why did they continue to live it? In fact, they used the Bible to prove that polygamy is in the Bible. Polygamists claim that God gave kin gave us his wives. But how can that be true if God removed polygamy until Joseph Smith? That's and ask point. yourself this important question. Jesus told us that two most important commandments. One, love God. Two, love each other. He said there's no greater commandment than these. So how can polygamy be a higher principle of God's gospel? Is it higher than loving God? It's a high principle. It's not even the gospel. The, uh, to make this even more clear, the word gospel means glad tidings or good news. And we challenge all women, you have been, who have been or are now in polygamy to explain what's good news about sharing your husband. What kind of glad tidings is it that proclaims you cannot go to heaven unless you let your husband have sex with multiple women? It's not good news. That's not good news <laughs> at all. And now we, we, we want to bring your attention again to John Taylor's so-called spiritual visitation of Joseph Smith and Jesus and show why that cannot have happened. Jesus doesn't appear to men teaching them false doctrine. We read this in the book of Acts. Acts 3, 19 and 20, through 21. Repent, therefore, and turn back, that your sins may be blotted out, that the time of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ appointed to, for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the time for refreshing all the things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. This says Jesus must remain in heaven. Must. The word must is very important. Until mm. the times to restore all things. Mm -hmm. And although Mormonism claims Joseph Smith restored all things, he didn't. <laughs> Besides, it's Jesus who restores all things, not Joseph Smith. Actually, Joseph Smith restored nothing. Uh, restoration means back to the original. And that's not where Mormonism is at. And please note that the original marriage was monogamy. And as for Joseph Smith returning from the dead to talk to John Taylor, that's necromancy. And God prohibits, uh, and the Bible teaches, the dead do not return. And we have a couple of scriptures to share about that. Job 7, 9 through 10. As a cloud vanished and is gone, so he who goes down to the grave does not return. He will never come to his house again. His place will, no, will know him no more. Job 16.22, only a few years will pass before I will go on the journey of no return. Hey, now this is clear that the dead are not coming back. And Hebrews 9.27 says it is appointed for man to die once and then the judgment. That's it. And I think it's interesting that all of these groups have similar stories where the dead comes, yeah. they hear from a dead, their dead leader has come and told them mm -hmm. to take the mantle. Uh, there's so many stories like uh, it Joseph is. Leslie Broadbent talks about that. And it is, yeah. My mother had the same experiences. It's necromancing, it's satanic, it's, it's demonic. Well, it certainly isn't something that the Bible condoning God prohibited, absolute prohibited communicating with the dead. And Isaiah, the prophet, actually uh, said in, in uh, chapter 18, 19 through 20, he said, and when you say, 
uh, when they say to you, inquire of the mediums and the ne necromancers who chirp and mutter, should not a people inquire of their God? Should they inquire of the dead on behalf of the living? To the teaching and to the testimony, if they do not speak according to this word, it is because they have no dawn. They have no light, light. in them. There's nothing in the Bible that uh, allows for or teaches or preaches that death's going to return and give you or me or anybody else doctrine, especially when it contradicts the Bible, especially when it contradicts what God already said. So we know that John Taylor didn't come back and didn't communicate uh, with Jesus or with Joseph Smith, as he claimed. And if he did have some spiritual experience, it wasn't from God. And you should read 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses uh, 12 through 15, to explain whatever that experience might have been, if he even had one at all. Yeah. Um, and yet they claim that's where the authority came for the polygamy groups today, because John Taylor was president of the LDS church at that point. Yeah, we were also taught that uh, that there was a time Joseph Smith came and set five men apart to live the principle. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's part of this uh, all night meeting. It was, it, this was a separate story where that, that meeting happened, and then there was another another occasion where that was separate. That's what I was taught anyway. That these men, G Joseph Smith and, or it, no, it wasn't Jesus. It was Joseph Smith that came to him with the leader and set them apart. And set five men apart. Yeah. Too. That uh, there never should have been a it. year that a child wasn't born in polygamy. Yes. That's mm -hmm. what happened during that one. Mm -hmm. And they claim that uh, Joseph Smith is resurrected. And that's how come he, why he could come back. But the Bible is clear that there will be no resurrection until Jesus comes back the second time. There will be no resurrection until then. It says that in the Bible, that, that he will be the first fruits, and then when he returns, the rest of the resurrection will take place. Okay. So, so he wasn't, he's, Joseph Smith's not resurrected, and he doesn't come back and teach false doctrine. Well, there's more. Next time we are going to get, dig more into this sermon and uh, approach his second sermon uh, with Karen as we talk about the doctrines of men that polygamists give to their people. Thanks, Karen. You're welcome. You know, the devil is not anti-religion, but he is anti-Christ. He's the author of all false religions, actually, and they keep people captive and captivated. And those religions have contrived a different Jesus than the Bible reveals. Chapter 13 of uh, Revelation tells us what we need to know about Antichrist. He not only seeks personal worship, but will do miracles, false miracles, to deceive people into worshiping him. Jesus said, beware, watch out. If you think you're worshiping the true Jesus, you need to check out what you believe about him. And the only place that you'll find truth about him is in the Bible. Mormonism teaches the Book of Mormon is God's word, but God referred to his word before the Book of Mormon was ever created. And the Bible has passed every test of authenticity. The Book of Mormon has passed no test except that millions trust it based on blind faith and good feelings. It's your eternity. Please don't let anyone deceive you. Check it out and then choose the truth. Thank you for watching.